I can't talk about Ethiopia and not talk about Eritrea, a country where the president has continued to oppress its own people for the past 22 years. Don't forget that Eritrea is a one-party state, a communist government. You need permission to gather together, you need permission to travel to another village, you need permission to do everything. So if a group of people are gathered together, they may accuse them of plotting against the government and be arrested. And forget about freedom of press in Eritrea because Eritrea has the least freedom of press in the whole world. For five consecutive years now, they've ranked the lowest. In fact, they rank lower than North Korea. And one of the things that this government requires of its people in Eritrea is a mandatory military service from the age of about 18 till God knows when. Some people have sat in the military for 15 years. Everybody has to serve in the military. Even priests, religious leaders, they are forced to serve in the military. The government keeps telling them that there's an eminent war ahead. So the country is preparing for war. They are afraid that there could be war with Ethiopia because you know they fought with Ethiopia before. And women serving in military are forbidden from getting pregnant. On the other hand though, army officers, male officers have the right to have sex with these female soldiers at will. In fact, this is not considered rape, yet they are not supposed to get pregnant. You see what I'm saying? Now one guy that escaped the military after serving for like 12 years said that he was jailed three times while he was in the military. And this is not the usual jail that you know, mm, this is an underground jail where they will give the people one pathetic meal in a day, one meal in a day. And they're only allowed to shower once a month. Just imagine getting a shower once a month. Plus they can't say a word inside the prison without getting permission. You, you know I told you they have to get permission for everything. They have to get permission from security guards before they can say anything in the prison. If you say something they beat you down and tie you up. And then they pour sugar water on the person before taking them outside where cockroaches and ants will gang up on them, you know? And so it is because of this brutality in in Eritrea that a lot of Eritreans are fleeing the country. I'm talking about thousands of people fleeing every month. Some people are saying between 1,000 and 3,000 people flee Eritrea every month. Which is why their entire soccer team disappeared in Kenya in 2009 after they went there for a match. The same thing happened in 2011 when they went to play in Tanzania, remember? And even last year, the whole team disappeared in Uganda. Now, the sad thing, you know, is that while these people are trying to flee, many of them are kidnapped in the Sinai Desert by the Bedouins. These people know that the Eritreans are trying to flee the oppressive regime in their country. So they capture them on the way, demanding huge ransom from their family members. Sometimes they ask for like $30,000 to $50,000 per head. Just imagine, I'm talking about American dollars. You know, sometimes it takes months, even more than a year for some families to raise this money because they didn't have it. But you know, you want to save your children and right? you want to save your father or anybody that was kidnapped. Meanwhile, they tortured these people for as long as they keep them. For months, so they beat them, they burn them, they put hot stuff on their body. You see what I'm saying? Just to torture them. They rape them, they shock them inside water. Electric shock. Of course, thousands of them have died in the process and many of them whose families somehow managed to pay the large ransom demanded. Many of them, even though after the families paid, they often feel that they cannot go back home because they realize that their family has become financially ruined trying to save them. And those whose families cannot raise this money, they are usually tortured to death, yes. Or sometimes they will sell them to organ traffickers, you know, people that will take out their organs and just sell their body parts anyhow. Or sometimes they sell them into prostitution or human labor trafficking. Tigisti Tekla tells us her story. Raped by smugglers, she became pregnant and had an abortion when she was in Israel. Tagisti says she's prepared to speak out so the world knows about the ordeal she and many other women suffer in the Sinai. Meanwhile, the government pretends not to know what is going on in the Sinai Desert, even though this is happening to his own citizens, and this is still going on as we speak. And it's time for Egyptian government to pay more attention to what is going on in its own territory and go after the people that are killing the African immigrants. So my people, let's not be silent about all these atrocities. Please go online, find out how you can help the people that are held captive and how you can help the people that are in their country trying to get out. Honestly, I can't wait for the day that Eritreans will be liberated from this oppressive regime that they have right now. You know me. I'm